Hi, uh, so this is our second podcast and uh, today I have a very special guest and she will be sharing her story with you all. Hi, uh, I am an artist manager and an event manager and uh, I've worked with a lot of NGOs as well. Uh, I live in South Delhi and um my childhood was basically i don't remember much of my childhood because basically it was uh, spent in uh, in inside a house or mostly uh playing with my friends and after like i got like you know fight with my friends it was basically spent in front of a tv and i wasn't great at studies that much okay What was your what was the subject that you absolutely hated? Math. Math thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The math teacher really hated me, so I just started hating the subject instead okay. of the subject is instead of the teacher. Hmm. Okay. So what is your story of um, as you have shared with us that you went through child sexual abuse? when it started and what was the age then i was 6 or 7 years old um we had a great family friend i used to call him mama and like mommy and we were very close but one day like i was left with like my mama alone and like or oh, f- for babysitting duties my mama was sitting with me and he did something i don't i didn't know at that time like what was happening really mm-hmm. but after that i saw the satisfaction on his face so mm-hmm. i was like i think that makes him happy but it hurts but like it makes me happy it, it makes him happy mm-hmm. so i think okay so but like a, a week later it happened again and then it happened again and then it happened again and again and again and again and, again. Mm-hmm. and uh, i couldn't understand why this is happening mm-hmm. but it made him, but it made him happy so i was just like okay i just wanted my his happiness that is all mm-hmm. so uh after some time like till i was like 13 hmm. i it went on till i was 13 countless times i don't remember how many times it happened but like it happened till i was 8 uh, 14 or 13 hmm. because he had to leave to canada okay because of his job so his family and everyone like just went away and on the night of his flight he came to my house he raped me again and just went away and that's how you thought of uh, sharing it with somebody your parents or i tried i actually tried but they said it is all in your head it's just because see um right after he left uh my nana died hmm. so i had a really bad psychotic breakdown okay so we went to the psychiatrist after like I was calmed down uh, with injections and stuff hmm. and everything uh, like I was in the hospital for 10 days and then after that we went to the psychiatrist and he was like you have schizophrenia okay you have depression hmm. you have a lot of mental stuff hmm. he didn't use that word of course but like I can't share all of that yes so uh that is why my parents told me that it's all in your head it must be your hallucinations again 
But right. I didn't understand one thing. If it was my health condition, why would it happen till like for like seven freaking years? So in that seven years, you thought of like telling it to your parents, like when you were young, or anybody in your family. My, uh, I wasn't that. You know, informed. If you can say it in, in that way, I was. I didn't know what was happening actually. Mm. I just knew that he did something it hurt it and then it it made him happy and I am that kind of person who would do anything to make someone happy okay and I was just told I was just told that it's all in my head and nothing like that can happen he's just he's like your mama hmm. he can't do stuff like that and so this is something which happened in your childhood right uh, i want to know is it still affecting you in some other other way maybe in your in your life today or in your relationship today with other people or maybe your boyfriend or uh, with a family members sometimes you see uh, i make boyfriend uh, like i don't make my boyfriends but like um when i get into a relationship it's mostly based on sex because i'm not the best person to be in a relationship with because my body is not that good and stuff but still they use me just for sex and uh i think uh, to you know increase my self esteem or something like that i don't know uh i just allow that to happen because I want myself make. I want to make myself feel better about hmm. what is actually happening. Hmm. Okay, and um, what will be your message to people out there in society, and in fact, specifically youth? What can they do to prevent um, sexual abuse? Because it's not that sexual abuse is happening, and it's being done by somebody who's unknown. In most of the cases, it's being done by a person who has uh, who's no who's known to the child. uh so what is your response what can they do to prevent it um they can do a lot of things they can spread awareness they can sp- spreading awareness is the biggest thing you know mm-hmm. because if the person who is being uh, abused knows what is happening they can raise their voice mm-hmm. and also the elder people like their trusted ones the person who is being abused their elder ones the, their trusted ones mm-hmm. know like this actually this is the thing that actually happened mm-hmm. uh, then they can take action in mm-hmm. a legal ma- manner and may ha- uh, help it make it stop mm-hmm. and get him get him or her behind the the get him or her behind the bars or or him or her behind the bars also and the person who was abused uh some uh, psychological help okay so have you taken some kind of psychological help like consulting a psychologist or maybe going through a therapy kind of a thing uh i have taken therapy a lot of therapy hmm and it has worked for you or not um th- the kind of therapy that i went through i don't think it really worked with me because um i wasn't ready to actually face the fact that this actually happened and i allowed it to happen so but now i'm see- seeing a different kind of psychologist who is very supportive and like uh, she understands me and she really actually knows what to say and like tell me that not your fault mm. and even if it is you were a kid you were a kid and you were not you would you you were a kid and you had no idea what was happening to you you were not in a um environment or uh, you were not able to identify ki what is right or what is not so it was never 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 ever your fault 
and uh, since you are here speaking up against it and speaking about or uh, speaking your story what is that one thing which is motivating you to speak up and how do you think that speaking up against child sexual abuse is going to make an impact um, and why are you sharing your story my main purpose of sharing my story is because um people are afraid to say the word sex or rape or sexual abuse something like that mm. and we need to know that this is this is a very common thing it shouldn't be but it is a very common thing mm. and it should be spoken up against because people are suffering and if you don't do anything about it then mm. after a while it will become a huge problem mm. and it has become a huge problem mm, yes. you can you read the news every day there is someone being born to death or like something like that i don't even want to repeat whatever is going on outside the world right now mm. yes so um every day we are reading cases 6 years 7 years or uh, 26 months old 6 months old yes and uh, i really appreciate your courage of coming up and raising your voice because trust me it's going to help a lot of other people also to speak up because sometimes in life you all, you just need a listening ear and uh, you need people who can speak like who can listen to you when you're going through stuff uh, is there any last line or one motivational thing that has inspired you in your life because this was something which happened in your past and there's a whole new life that is uh, there for you so what is that one thing which inspires you in your life to go forward and rule the world see i am a very successful event manager and artist manager mm-hmm. i have managed so many artists in my life and the only thing that motivates me the most is my passion towards my work because if you don't have passion in life mm-hmm. then it's kind of worthless yeah it's like you're without soul yeah you have to follow your soul you can't do you i know there's parent pressure with everyone mm. but if you actually want to follow your passion you will follow it even if your parents or your elders or your guardian or anyone will stop you from doing it but, uh, yeah okay so uh have a passion in your life and when any abuse happen it is not the end um there's a whole new life that is outside for you for you to rule and uh, shine so uh, here i am megha bhatia signing off the session for today and thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for sharing your story you're a super 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 strong person and uh, i'm sure this is going to inspire a lot of people <laughs>